So WWDC is coming up and it's a time of year that Apple shares the latest and greatest for all of their platforms. Now it's always fun to speculate about what's coming, but in this video, I'm just going to share my wish list of things. And my wish list is, I actually don't really have like OS uh, system level wish list features in a way. It's just kind of this random grab bag of things and like, oh, I wish this app had a little feature or I wish this API existed, that kind of stuff. So this is going to be probably pretty random, to be honest. Since I'm an app developer, I am going to split this up a little bit. So I'm going to have one section that's just for the user facing stuff that I want and then another section that's just for like the developer stuff that I want. All right, let's start with the user stuff or the like customer facing stuff, the, you know, not the developer stuff. That makes sense. All right, so let's talk about Apple Notes first. So Apple Notes, I I use Apple Notes a lot. I also use Bear um, for note taking. But one of the things I would love in Apple Notes is uh, a little, a few more formatting options. And specifically, I would love a horizontal rule or a divider when you're creating sections of content. When I'm writing a lot of notes, especially longer notes, I just prefer to use horizontal rules for things. And I do this in bear all the time with three dashes. And just visually, it helps me chunk up my uh, my long notes. And I, I've i like hacked this together in Apple Notes for so long, I've tried a lot of different things. And literally right now, I just have like a shortcut where uh, I type three equal signs, and then it adds like 10 more or something like that. So it's a it's basically just a bunch of equal signs that make a divider, but I would love a native horizontal rule divider formatting option for Apple Notes. Another one is markdown shortcuts for uh, formatting stuff. So I'm not looking for a markdown in Apple Notes. It's rich text and I actually like that. But if I'm gonna write a header, it'd be nice to do two pound signs and then a space and it gives you a header. I know they have keyboard shortcuts for stuff, um, but having those markdown style keyboard shortcuts would just be a nice efficiency to be able to use it. All right, let's talk about Apple Mail. Um, I've used a lot of different mail services and applications over the years, and uh, Apple Mail is very good. I, you know, I, I think it can weirdly get some hate, but it's very basic and it kind of handles so many different email services. So I, I actually think it's very good. Um, but there are a few things that I would love to see come to it. First one is uh, snoozing of emails. I know they have the like, remind me about this email, but the way it works is it's not really like a snooze. Um, and when it comes back, I don't know, it doesn't actually like leave the inbox either. It's very strange. I would love a proper snoozing to say like, don't, I don't wanna see this until five days from now. And then when it comes up, it, it comes up and it like stays at the top. I would love that. I would love to be able to pin an email too, or maybe a couple emails, you know, like in Apple Notes, you can pin some some notes to stay at the top. Sometimes there's emails that I just wanna keep in view all the time, or, or maybe I'm gonna come back to them later. And I would love to be able to pin an email uh, or a couple emails and just have them kind of sitting in a certain spot until I'm done with them. Uh, a screener feature would be very cool. This was popularized by uh, Hey, Hey email, and I used Hey for a while. Um, the screener feature is very cool and I think a nice way to gain a little more control over the, the emails that you're getting and from where they're coming from and stuff like that. So I don't think they'll ever do this, uh, but it would be nice. Uh, adding profiles, like uh, similar to, to the way MimeStream does. So if you have multiple email accounts, you can kind of separate stuff and say, this is my work account and this is my personal account. And then your folders and kind of the the structure of of the app can uh, can mirror that. So that'd be that'd be a nice one too. I would love smart mailboxes to come to iOS and iPad OS. You can do this on the Mac, and you've been able to do it on the Mac for a really long time. But those smart mailboxes don't carry over to iOS. So bring them to iOS. Uh, I would love to be able to have email templates. So you know, if I'm writing a new thing, like I do a lot of customer support stuff for Sofa, and I have certain templates that I use to just kind of not rewrite the same thing over and over again. And it'd be nice to have those templates in there. Last one is uh, just like composing emails in Apple Mail. Um, I would love just take the notes engine or the, the writing engine from Apple Notes and just plop it into Apple Mail. And I feel like that's good to go. Because 
one of the things I write all the time is bulleted list and there's probably a keyboard shortcut for it, but it's just like, it's easier to just write a star or dash and then a space. And then all of a sudden you have a format of bulleted list. And uh, I would prefer to not need a keyboard shortcut to do that. Just have that kind of built in. All right, so for Apple calendars have one thing, I would love to have reminders integrated into Apple calendar. So if I have a reminder, like I need to go pick up something, you know, I'd like to see that in my calendar too. For messages, I would like to see a better, better way for like threaded conversations and group uh, messages. I'm, I'm in a few group messages and the threading and like replying to certain messages has, has gotten better, but it can still be very, uh, very hard when things are noisy. So that'd be a nice thing. I would love to see a big investment in iWork. And uh, so iWork is like their productivity suite of apps. So you have Keynote, Pages, and Numbers. I would also kind of lump uh, like Freeform in there and like, you know, uh, honestly, Apple Notes is kind of like that too in a way. But anyway, the iWork apps are, you know, I, I think they're very good, right? Like a, a lot of people will compare them to uh, Microsoft Office or Google uh, services. But like Apple Numbers is very... I think more powerful than people give it credit for. And it's extremely pleasant to use as well. And um, I use it for a bunch of stuff. I also use Google Sheets for a bunch of stuff, but for Apple numbers, I would love if pivot tables could automatically refresh their data. So right now it's, you have to go and manually refresh that, which is definitely an old school thing from like the way Excel works and stuff. But the way Google Sheets works is perfect, right? You know, you make a pivot table and it is always up to date with the latest data from whatever source it's pulling from. And uh, if Apple numbers could have auto refreshing pivot tables, that would actually solve a lot of problems for me personally. While I'm wishing, I would love the query function that Google Sheets has as, uh, to come to uh, Apple numbers. That'd be nice. All right. So Freeform is very nice. Uh, I've used it for a couple of things, but the thing that drives me nuts is on the Mac, I want, it, I, I feel like I want it to behave like a design tool and a lot of design tools, like if you use Sketch or, um, or Figma, if you hold the space bar down on your keyboard, you're able to then drag around with the mouse, the, uh, you know, on the big canvas. And it's a very nice and fast way to kind of navigate around without having to use a trackpad or something like that. And Freeform doesn't have that on the Mac. And uh, I find it, I try to do it all the time and I just get very frustrated. And, I, and I, I find it harder to navigate around the canvas without that feature. So that'd be a good one. Okay, quick interlude here, just for a little plug. So if you don't know, I make an app, an iOS app called Sofa. And it's an app that helps you be a little more intentional with your downtime. And you do this by making a list of books to read, movies to watch, video games to play, that kind of stuff. So let me give you a quick example. So let's say you're out with friends and everyone's talking about TV shows and they say, oh, have you seen this show? And you go, oh, I don't, no, I haven't seen it. You should check it out. What you would probably normally do with that is chuck it into like your notes app or maybe reminders, or you probably wouldn't do anything, right? You would just say, oh yeah, I should watch it and then totally forget. So Sofa is a purpose-built app for stuff like this. So for all the things you want to do in your downtime, whether it's watching movies, TV shows, playing video games, and now you can really add anything to it. So if you want to plan vacations or hikes you want to go on or restaurants you want to track, all of those things are possible on Sofa. And it's a nice purpose-built tool just for that stuff. And it doesn't have to get mixed up inside of your, your notes app or or your to-do list or that kind of stuff. So if that's interesting to you, you can head over to sofahq.com. Uh, or you can just go to the App Store and search Sofa, and I'll have links in the uh, description below. All right, so let's talk about the developer stuff that I would love to see. I don't know if any of this stuff is coming, but this is the kind of stuff that I would love. All right, first I wanna talk about App Store Connect. So App Store Connect, if you don't know, is basically like the admin tool for managing your app, uh, managing like the subscriptions, the prices, and, and uh, you know test flight betas and stuff like that that you have um, for your app. And that's how you kind of publish stuff out to the App Store. I don't know what's the underlying issue with App Store Connect, but it is definitely one of the slowest uh, websites and web apps I've ever used. Um, everything just takes a long time, like everything, loading a tab, 
clicking into something just to see details. It's just, it's just like tedious and, and slow to do very, very simple things in there. So overall performance improvements there would be uh, very welcome. When doing beta testing through test flight, beta testers can send anonymous feedback uh, to me, right? To that developer. And uh, some of that can be triggered, like they can take a screenshot, maybe they ran into like a bug uh, or maybe something crashed or something like that. So uh, they can share that anonymous feedback. That's fine, but I, I would argue that if you are beta testing, uh, you should not be anonymous. And what anonymous means is like, I at least need to know your email address because the number of test flight uh, feedback I get that is asking me a question, saying like, hey, I, I'm asking you a question, I need a response, but there's no email address tied to it because it's anonymous. I literally can't help that person like at all. And I understand, this is where I think like the privacy stuff has maybe gone a tad too far because I actually can't support the person who needs support because I don't have their email address to email them. And I would argue that if someone is opting into beta test, then they should also be opting into a little bit less uh, quote unquote privacy, like at least share your email address so I can get in touch with you when you reach out. Like you have made the decision to reach out to me and you're asking a question, but I literally can't answer you. Um, and if you don't wanna share the email address, then like give me a way to respond to that person uh, within App Store Connect and maybe, you know, Apple handles sending the response or something, but it's, uh, the number of times it's happened, it's just, it's very annoying and frustrating and it makes it hard to do my job. So in App Store Connect, you can also manage like the subscription offers you have, the prices, uh, any discounts you're gonna offer, or like, say you're gonna run a sale for a little while, that kind of stuff. Um, this is easily one of the most convoluted uh, setups I, I've ever personally experienced. Um, I don't find anything about it to be intuitive and I have made many mistakes with it because I thought I was doing one thing and then something else was happening. Um, I think it just it just needs it needs uh, it needs a bit of a rethink for how to structure this stuff. It is not pleasant to do. Anytime I have to go in there and mess with stuff, I, I have to like prep myself I'm like all right here I go right? Like getting in there. And, uh, on the flip side, I, in, when I was, I was exploring some, some different like, uh, shop options for, for different things that I do. And I was playing with Stripe and setting up products and discounts and a store via Stripe in the back end is like, it's incredible and completely night and day compared to how you do an app store connect. And, I think there's a lot that uh, there's a lot of room for improvement with App Store Connect when it comes to managing essentially like SKUs for for the different products that you sell. All right, test flight beta testing. Test flight is amazing. It handles so much infrastructure for you, which is great. But one of the one of the things that I think really needs to change is that when you submit a new build for test flight to send out to beta testers, it has to be reviewed by App Store. By apps or the review team. I don't think that should happen because let's say I have uh, version 4.0, right? That has to be uh, reviewed by App Store before I can share it with beta testers. But I can then submit 50 other builds with the same version number without being reviewed. But if I change the version number to 4.0.1, it has to be reviewed again. And the biggest problem with this is, and I've run, run into this in the past couple of weeks, is, you know, I release an update and I get uh, feedback that there's some bugs or crashes or whatever, and I try, I want to fix those and I want to get those out to beta testers as fast as possible to be able to test that stuff and be like, okay, sometimes I can't reproduce an issue on my end, so I want to be able to, you know, put a potential fix in place and then share it with beta testers to confirm if it's fixed. And once it's fixed, then I can push it out to, you know, the official app store, which has to be reviewed. That's fine. And the review of test flight betas is, I just think it's unnecessary. And um, it's, you know, it, it's not like super slow. Like it tends to happen in 
maybe at most a day or half a day or something like that. But I would argue that the the workflow is unnecessary and, and again, gets in my way of doing the job that I need to do. Next is better developer documentation. So there's been a lot of new stuff from Apple, um, especially with like getting newer people up to up to speed on iOS development and Swift and Swift UI, where they've they've done very nice documentation for that stuff. But I've just run into so many, and I know I'm not the only one, but I, I'm only talking about me. Um, I've just run into so many uh, APIs that I've had to use where, you know, there was very little documentation or, or I don't know, no documentation, or basically they just tell you like, here's all the methods you can use, right? With like zero context of how to use these things and, and all different stuff. So I think there, I think, for the size that Apple is, having such uh, poor documentation is, I think, inexcusable, personally. Because you have companies like RevenueCat, you have uh, companies like Astro.js, their documentation is amazing, and getting up to speed on that stuff is really great. And yeah, the, the Apple stuff is just, uh, it has gotten better, but it's it still needs a lot of work. All right, so if you want, you know, Apple gives you for analytics and crash reports, Apple gives you kind of basic stuff, which is, you know, which is fine. But if you wanted to do anything custom when it comes to uh, crash reports, or if you want to track certain analytics, um, you have to go to a third party for that. So you have to integrate another another service and the cost for those can be um, very high. And especially for an indie developer, you have to be like, is this even worth it? Like. You know, do I even am I am I even ready for uh, this level of uh, of payment kind of thing? So, I would love to see Apple expand their uh, analytics and crash reporting to be a little bit more more powerful. Where even if you can add your own like kind of custom events that you want to track, um, and I I honestly think like this is very in line with their stance on privacy, where it kind of sucks where like. Say you want you you want to you want to understand a little bit more about how people are using your app, but you want to do it in a very privacy respecting way. It, it, it's actually hard to go out and find good services for that, and I know they exist, but um, I feel like this is something that Apple could definitely do. So one of the rumors is that uh, Xcode is going to get a lot of AI integration, like similar to GitHub Copilot stuff. I have not personally used GitHub Copilot uh, for anything, but I have. You know, I've used ChatGPT and, and Google Gemini for development related stuff and not necessarily for give me code to like go do this thing. But the way I've used it is uh, essentially is like I treat it as a coworker because, you know, I work alone and sometimes I run into issues, you know, whether it's like a technical one or, or even just like how do I structure this information? And I need someone to like kind of talk off of and bounce things off of. And I've actually found things like ChatGPT and Gemini to be really great for that, to help me think through something where they may not necessarily give me the answer, but they give me some answers and that, that allows me to kind of navigate other directions and to figure stuff out. And the biggest drawback with using those tools is that I have to feed it a lot of context. And sometimes adding that context is it just, again, it's, it's tedious. It kind of takes me out of the flow of thinking. And with Xcode, the fact that Xcode could have all the context, right? It, it has, it can see your entire code base. And if I could essentially have that coworker inside of Xcode and to be able to like think through stuff, that would be pretty sweet. I don't know if that's how it's going to be integrated. I, I could see initially, maybe it's just like a, you know, initially a slightly better autocomplete for for different things, or it gives you like a a uh, you know skeleton of a of a specific uh, screen you want to build or something like that. Um, but I, I think the coworker aspect could be that would be I would love that personally. Now, in terms of AI APIs, I'm assuming that any AI related stuff that there will be APIs related to that. And I'm also kind of assuming that they're going to abstract that stuff away. And that's, that is what I want. Like, so for example, I don't want to say they offer some kind of, uh, LLM, uh, you know, API that you can use for, 
either generating stuff in your apps or summarizing content or, or whatever. I don't, I personally don't want to have to like pick which model because I don't really care. I, I kind of want that to be abstracted away because I can see that over time, like those models being swapped in and out and different things. And from my perspective, as long as it works and, and it, you know, it kind of does what it's supposed to do, that's fine. So I'm hoping, and I, I, this is how I think they'll do it, um, that it'll be more like, uh, you know, app intense the way app intense works or the way you can integrate with or talk to Siri and integrate Siri into your apps and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, just abstracting away the LLM stuff uh, so that if it swapped in the future to something else, it's fine. All right, definitely Swift UI improvements. There, you know, there's going to be Swift UI improvements. There's probably going to be new things you can do with Swift UI. That's great. I think the biggest thing is just for me is uh, performance and specifically scrolling performance. Where where I've tried to use Swift UI and where I do use Swift UI, I don't use it for any like core uh, views or like very uh, uh, list heavy views because I've personally found that the scrolling performance doesn't. It's just not very good, right? And and when you have that stuff in UI kit, it's just very fast, very smooth. And uh, until Swift UI can do that, like I would love to use Swift UI for for more of the app because it's it is very pleasant to to build UI that way. But until the scrolling performance is is better uh, or at the same level as UI kit, I'll I'll just keep sticking with UI kit. I would love a rich text kit API. And very similar to like, if you want to integrate pencil kit into your app, you know, kind of gives you all the drawing tools. You don't have to like build that stuff from scratch. It gives you a canvas, all those things. Building rich tech or, or adding a rich text feature to an app is, you know, not trivial at all. And it's interesting because I feel like uh, it would benefit Apple to do this too, because like, it seems like they've built multiple rich text engines across, uh, you know, Apple Mail, Pages, Notes, all these different, all these different apps, and maybe even in Freeform too. Like I don't, I don't know what's powering that, but it's like take the Apple Notes one and make like a simple version of that. That it's it's just kind of plug and play. Like I just want like very simple rich text. Like it can be as simple as I just want bold, italic, be able to make lists and maybe like add links to stuff, right? Like that, that's like the basics of what I want. Cause I, I have plans to add rich text, uh, editing to Sofa in the future and, uh, being able to just use kind of like the off the shelf thing would be, would be nice. So those are all my wishes for WWDC this year. I, I have no idea if even half of those will come true, especially like the iWork stuff or the Apple numbers, <laughs> but I would love it or horizontal rules and Apple notes. I mean, come on, come on. But anyway, um, I'd be curious to hear what you think. What are your wishes for dub dub this year? And, uh, I'll actually be there this year. I'm lucky enough to be able to go. So if you're there and you see me, just say, Hey, I'll have a, you'll see the sofa t-shirt. I'll be wearing a sofa t-shirt every day. So that'll be like my name tag. So if you see that, come over and say hello. I'd love to love to chat. But anyway, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.